Small form factor PCs are the vein of budget PC building, but today we want to prove they're not that bad, and are destined for a better reputation. Here we have the Acer AX3812, which I got from a reseller for £5. It's a fairly small size and seems to be just slightly larger than that of an Xbox 360 console, so it's definitely on the smaller side of desktop PCs. Internally, it surprised me as it's pretty much just standard PC parts, from the hard drive to even a full-size cooler, and the heatsink was just pretty large for a PC of this size. Even the board is standard micro ATX, so you could remove it and put it in a better case. It has 3GB of DDR2 800MHz RAM, but no hard drive or dedicated graphics card. The chip inside, I think, is the main reason it was being sold, as it said in the listing that it would just shut itself down randomly and lo and behold the thermal paste was pretty much non-existent. Our first step was going to be getting out the CD and DVD drive, which seems to be just getting in the way of our upgrades, as we want to turn this £5 hunk of junk into a piece of technology that can hold its own in today's games. We're going to need some storage for that first, so we're opting for a Seagate hard drive from the same retailer that it sold as the PC. It cost us £5 and it's nothing special and just something to put the files onto. We wanted to upgrade the RAM to 8GB, so the 3GB was, well, not going to be enough, and the 1GB stick was just a bit odd and we didn't need it anyway. This extra 6GB of RAM only cost us £12, and is a good amount to have today. The CPU is definitely one of my favourite parts, a Core 2 Quad Q9 450 for £13, definitely a great CPU for the money. It runs at 2.66GHz and has a whopping 12MB of cache. Of course, this was followed by fitting the cooler back on, as that thing looks like it could cool anything. Graphically it's also very interesting, we have this used Radeon HD 8670 for £15 which is like a weird mix between an R7250 and a HD7770, but most of all it only uses a mere 20 watts, while still retaining most of the power. Other versions may vary, but this Dell version sure is very power efficient. But there's one issue, it doesn't actually fit in the PC, so it's time to make a few modifications. The card itself has 2GB of DDR3 at a clock speed of 1.1GHz. The core comes clocked in at 1GHz which definitely isn't bad for the money. However that slower DDR3 could definitely slow us down in some newer titles. So with that altered and cut down, let's get on with installing Windows onto this thing after we put it back together. As for operating system, we'll be using Windows 7. However, any version of Windows would run pretty well on this PC, but Windows 7 is my go-to thanks to how quickly it installed on the PC. And well, general tasks worked well on it and the PC was incredibly speedy, but that was to be expected. So with that all installed, let's get on with some benchmarks. Grand Theft Auto 5 up first returned us with a very playable experience and something very similar to that of an Xbox One console. The game was ran in 1080p with high settings enabled and returns to very playable 31fps on average. Our minimums didn't stray too far below this with lows down to 26fps when there was a lot going on. This of course was followed by Fallout 4 which is running in the 900p resolution with the majority of the options set to medium, and a few less intensive ones set to high. Of course it was ran at a solid 30fps for the majority of the time, but could slow down to minimums of 21fps when there was a lot of action on screen. Next up is CSGO, which is arguably one of our best experiences on the machine, which gave us a great 96fps average with lows down to 60fps when there was a lot going on. It looked pretty damn good with a mixture of medium and high settings enabled in the 1080p resolution. 
Finally, Doom, which looked okay and ran about the same, with low settings in the 1080p resolution and a 50% render scale. We saw a pretty playable experience that is impressive for how much the machine cost us, but is definitely held back by the low power GPU we have installed. As for Times264 recording, we fired up OBS with a 720p canvas and a 3500 bitrate. This of course returns with a great experience in game and in recording. Sure it's a little bit rough around the edges, but in less CPU intensive titles you should definitely be able to up the resolution and the bitrate without any worries. So should you go out and buy one of these modest little machines? I'm going to say if you lack the space and need a small PC with decent specs and a low price, then models like this are easily the ones to get hold of. With a relatively cheap purchase price and decent upgrades readily available, they certainly don't lack the power you need. However, they certainly don't deserve the flack they get, as they aren't that bad as we've seen in the video. But your main blight will still be power limits and the size of the parts you have to look for, as they will reduce your options greatly. Thank you very much for watching, good night! Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this, and thank you to those of you that already have on your support so far. Also a big thank you to our patrons, if you want to become one of them there will be a link down in the description below where you'll be entitled to all kinds of various perks thanks to your support.